Deepseek is back and this time it is a vision language model. This is the latest version of their previous iteration, Deepseek VL2. This model comes in three different versions. One is the Deepseek VL2 Small, Deepseek VL2 Tiny and then Deepseek VL2. This is all based on Deepseek MOE family of models. MOE here stands for mixture of experts. In this video, I'm going to share everything that I know about this model. And we are also going to see some examples of how good the model is. I think the most important thing if you were to take away from this video is if you were to look at this particular graph, you've got activated parameters in your X axis. Activated parameter as a concept exists only in MOE. A mixture of expert model has got a lot of parameters, but during every token, only certain parameters are activated. And that is exactly why mixture of experts are computationally more uh, efficient. Now, if you see the X Y axis, this is average performance. And in this particular case, uh, this got uh, an average of multiple benchmarks like MM Bench, MM Star, MM U, Math Vista, and a bunch of other benchmarks. Now, if you see a 1 billion parameter model, which in this case is DeepSeq VL2 Tiny, so DeepSeq VL2 Tiny is a 1 billion parameter active parameter model and DeepSeq small VL2 small is a 2.8 billion and DeepSeq VL2 is 4.5 billion activated parameters. The actual parameters might be a lot, but during a given token, this is the activated parameters. So for a 1 billion activated parameter model, you can see that DeepSeq VL2 Tiny exceeds or also almost on par with the 2 billion parameter model, which is again from a really good um, AI lab, which is Quen 2.0 in this particular case. So bottom line here is that this is a really good model, a strong model. Uh, the capability of the model is on multiple different um, domains like OCR, visual grounding and other things. Now, if you are not familiar with VLM as a concept, VLM stands for vision language model. So you've got a vision component and then you've got a language component. Uh, so you can give image as an input and text as an input and it gives you text as an output. So this is slightly different from what we saw with the unified model, which is Janus. So with Janus, this is again from DeepSeek, it's a unified model. So it means only one model exists and then that takes image and text input. It can output text and also image. Unlike that model, DeepSeek VL2 in this particular case is not a unified model. In fact, it's a very proper vision language model. That means there is a vision component and then there is a language component. So simply, this is the overview of DeepSeek VL2 model. So if you see, it's got a very lava style architecture, which we have covered long time ago on this channel. So it's got a visual encoder. So anytime you upload an image, it goes through a dynamic tiling process. What's the dynamic tiling process? You have to somehow split the image into multiple pieces. And that is exactly how it gets split here. So this is the dynamic styling pro tiling process that goes into a vision encoder and from there it goes into a vision language adapter and from that it gets split into image tokens and now is the prompt that you've given so for example you can upload the image and then say describe this image in detail so now you have got the image tokens now you have got the text tokens all of these go into the deep seek moe the mixture of expert model and finally auto regressively it starts generating what it gets so image and text input and text output so this is in simple the architecture of deep seek vl2 the good thing about deep seek vl2 like i said that these are small tiny models i mean it's literally called tiny and small models for 1 billion parameter and 2.8 billion parameter and 4.5 billion parameter model so given that this is a small model it can be really helpful in a lot of different uh, you cases where you cannot have internet. So if you want to prompt a GPT-4, oh, Gemini or these kind of really, let's say state of the art model and you don't have internet. And so these models would play a really tremendous role in those things. For example, you've got a manufacturing unit and you want to identify the items that are faulty or not faulty. So you can use a model like this, especially given that this is an open model, you can probably fine tune it. Right now, there is not an easy way to fine tune this, but probably in the future, you would be able to fine tune this model and then start using it. You should be able to use it in the edge devices, uh, 
like a really good quality edge devices and a lot of other good use cases exist only because this model exists in this particular case. The only catch here is that I would say, unlike other DeepSeq models, this model comes with a DeepSeq model license. So even though they say it is a commercial use, this is not like an Apache 2.0 or MIT license, like completely, a very clearly visible open source license. But if you just like leave that aside for a moment, this model has really good benchmarks. It does a lot of things good. And it's not just a simple image captioning model. That's one thing that I wanted to highlight with this model. This model has got a really tremendous OCR capabilities. OCR stands for optical character recognition. So if you've got an image and then you've got text, this model can read it really well. So for example, there are multiple benchmarks across like doc VQA, chart VQA, in info VQA. So these benchmarks try to understand how good the model is in terms of OCR, optical character recognition. And now if you were to see this, for example, if you take Gemini 1.5 Pro, which I consider to be a really good multimodal model, on Doc VQA, this model has scored 93.1. And just this tiny model, it's, it's a 1 billion parameter model, not even the, like Gemini 1.5 Pro. And this 1 billion parameter model or 1 billion active parameter model has scored 88.9. Now imagine like the kind of environment you would want like a very small model, let's say compute faster inference, low latency, and this model could make a huge difference in those kind of situations. The DeepSeq VL2 small model has scored 92.3, which is almost on par with the GPT-40 and uh, slightly below Gemini 1.5 Pro. So these models are extremely good for a OCR, optical character recognition. And it's not just OCR. If you were to compare the true multimodal capabilities with benchmarks like MMMU, which is like massive multimodal um, understanding, if you see that even there, this model has a good performance, not at the level of leaders, but if you were to compare the DeepSeq VL2 tiny model with let's say any other model in this particular family case, the Quen 2 VL, 2 billion parameter model has scored 41.1 in MMMU and DeepSeq has scored 40.9, just like a 0.4 decimal points lesser than that. And other benchmarks also, you can see the, these small models like MathVista, you can see here, DeepSeq VL2 Tiny has scored 53.6, which is like the best overall in class when you compare it with the models in this particular range. Overall, I would say deep seek models are extremely good. Generally, we know the deep seek models are extremely good and this vision language model, I don't think this is any short of our expectation. Even though I have to create a separate tutorial to run the model on your own, uh, let's say cloud environment, I don't think you can easily run it on local machine. But if you are interested in me putting together a tutorial for that, please let me know in the comment section. The model is really good for a lot of different visual tasks. Like I said, it's not just OCR, it's not just just like upload an image and ask a question uh, for you to let's say caption the image the model has good meme understanding which is something that a lot of people use to test gpt 40 kind of models so if you upload a meme and then ask it okay what is the what does this image imply then it says okay the image humorously depicts the contrasting thoughts of a phd student it gives like different this illustrates the common experience of phd students who often find it difficult to fully disconnect from their research upload another meme and then say explain this meme to me and uh, believe it or not, I use uh, these kind of GPT-40 kind of tools a lot uh, to understand memes because my meme understanding is quite bad. So after you upload this image, it kind of gives you the understanding. This image humorously captures the playful defiance of the childhood using a visual of a child taking a bite of an untouchable cake to amplify humor and relatability. So this model is extremely good for meme understanding and the model is also good uh, for a multi-image conversation. Like you can have multiple images and then ask it to do something. For example, you've got a refrigerator, there are 10 pictures in the refrigerator and you want to ask what kind of things that I can make with you, make with these items, make with these ingredients, the model can answer. So you can upload these images and you can say, what would be a good drink to pair with my meal? It can answer. And it is bilingual, um, English and also Chinese. The model, again, the advantage of using a vision language model is uh, to upload an image and then have the language component discussion. Like you can say, okay, can you help me write a short travel story based on the photos? 
The most important thing that honestly, like I found this model is to be quite good at is this model can also do bounding boxes. So generally a vision language model would just like, you know, you can have the conversation, but in this case, the model can do bounding boxes. So you can upload a model, sorry, upload an image and then ask the model to do bounding boxes, like do object recognition. Like you can say, find all the watermelon slices. It will find the watermelon slices. You can say, locate the space needle in the given image. It locates the space needle. Identify Albert Einstein in the picture. It identifies Albert Einstein and not just that it also works very well for web UI and screenshots. So if you have got a screenshot and then ask it to do something, okay, find action games, it finds action games. And if you say pinpoint notifications in the image with its coordinates, it pinpoints the notification. So you might think it just uses the text, but only if it uses the text, it should highly highlight only the action games here, but it highlights everything. So I've got a small demo here, which is uh, from um, uh, Hugging Face Spaces. You can upload a picture here and then say, okay, select search text field. And as you can see here, it highlights the search text field. This is not an entirely new model. The model demo has complete come, uh, come out new. The model has been available for quite some time. And this is a newer version of the existing DeepSeek VL model. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.